My name is Yun Wang Li. I'm a lecturer in the School of Chemical Engineering. Uh, I got my first degree, bachelor degree in in China. The name, the major name is uh, Power and uh, Energy Engineering, a little bit different from the UK system. And uh, then I got a PhD in the UK and uh, working on process engineering. Uh, currently, I'm working. My focus is on energy storage technology. So. Uh, the driving force of such technology is the um, high share of renewable energy in the future. So such a technology is aimed to balance the power generation, energy generation and then demand in the future. So it's uh, quite critical to keep our energy supply chain works in the future. We want to ultimately to develop a technology that can enable store uh, energy at a very large scale so that we can make use of renewable for energy more efficiently. I assume means the, our cryogenic energy storage systems. Uh, such a system, uh, the principle of such a system is to use uh, liquid air as the energy vector to store energy. So the, the, the principle is at off-peak hours, uh, we use a more or like energy liquefaction unit to produce liquid air so that electricity is consumed and this energy is stored in the form of liquid air. And then at peak hours, we use this liquid air to produce electricity. So principally, the system consists of three parts. First part is the air liquefaction part, which produces liquid air. And the second part is the cryogenic tank, which is used to store liquid air. Third part is the energy generation part, which uses liquid air to produce electricity. You already saw the cryogenic energy storage systems, which is installed just behind the chemical engineering workshop. Uh, it successfully demonstrated the principles of using liquid air for energy storage. But uh, technically, there's still a lot of challenges to improve performance. So mainly the flexibility that you can absorb renewables. And the second is the round-trip efficiency. So you start you absorb one kilowatt electricity, you want to reproduce more in the generation processes, right? So our uh, research uh, covers a wide range from normal material formation, formulation and then uh, uses normal materials to manufacture heat and cold storage devices, then integrate these devices to the current pilot plant so that the efficiency can be improved as well as the operational flexibility. Uh, there's a lot of difficulties to improve the efficiency and flexibility. Uh, I can give you one example. So in this specific project, we have to make good use of both heat and cold. Because in the air, in the energy generation processes, the liquid air will release a lot of cold. And in uh, air liquefaction processes, we need this cold to minimize the power consumption. Uh, but the key thing is how can we store this very low grade code uh, at a temperature about minus 100 or minus one, 150 or minus 170 degrees C. So store this code uh, efficiently is a challenge and we are working on this developing new materials to do it more efficiently. Currently, I'm leading a module named Efficient Heat Engine and Heat Pumps. Uh, and the uh, module aims, aims on the fundamental analysis of this heat engine and heat pump systems using thermodynamics laws. And uh, this demonstrated uh, power plant, air liquid storage power plant, actually uh, consists of two parts. One is a liquefaction unit and one is power generation unit. And the liquefaction unit itself is a kind of heat pump. So consume electrical energy and uh, produce very low temperature cooling. And the power generation system is a, a kind of heat engine. So in this case, I'll spend two hours lecture to introduce this, uh, the systems and also ask the students to use in their uh, uh, learn skills to analyze the performance of such a system. At the last scales, we demonstrate the uh, feasibility of using liquid air to store energy. And uh, at lab skills, we developed some novel materials 
and we test this materials and uh, it has been demonstrated it has much better performance to store very low temperature code and very high temperature heat. Uh, our next step is uh, to uh, establish a much larger scale of this heat and cold storage unit and integrate this storage unit to the pilot plant to demonstrate a system level performance enhancement. Currently the pilot plant is used to first dem demonstrate the feasibility of use air as a liquid energy storage solution. And the second one is it is used for our future research. But I suppose in the future that the third possibility to use this uh, pilot plant for uh, undergraduate level education. Uh, by upgrading systems with more uh, sensors and control systems, uh, it is possible to uh, enable the undergraduate student in the future to program the operation of the such a system. Uh, of course, financial aid will cost a lot, a couple of millions, I, I, I think. But uh, in this case, we're going to enable our undergraduate student to gain very valuable real industry experience while they study here.